I have a theory, or as the internet so graciously pointed out, a hypothesis, that multiple dominoes in a large joint, such as that at the corner of a door, is stronger than a traditional mortise and tenon due to increased glue surface and contemporary glue strength. Now I'm not gonna go over that hypothesis in detail. If you want to watch that video where I explain the thought process, I'll throw a link up here. But in this video, we're gonna test that hypothesis. And maybe that's how theories are created. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. I just make things out of dead trees. But we are going to test it. And the first thing I need to do is cut these two joints so that we can actually try to break them. Here's what we've got. I've got a mortise and a tenon on this side, and I've got a bunch of dominoes cut on this side. Now you could make the argument that this piece being one and seven eighths thick could stand for a double tenon. And that's a perfectly relevant argument. That would increase the glue surface substantially, giving you arguably more glue surface than this. But we're talking about a single tenon because that was the traditional way to make a mortise and tenon in a large door in centuries past when chopping and cutting multiple tenons by hand would have been a nightmare. So we're gonna go with the single tenon on this one. Now I am working on the tiny subsequent workbench over here today because the door is still drying the last coat of finish over on my main workbench. But in order to keep things uniform and in order to test the theory in direct relation to the door, I'm going to do things exactly the same as I did over there. I'm gonna use the same epoxy. I'm gonna glue these up at the same time. I'm gonna give them multiple days to cure. And then we're going to test them in, how do I phrase that? What is the right mechanical way to say that? I'm going to attempt to break them using leverage as far away from the joint as I can. And if I can't break it, which I'm not 100% sure that I can, maybe we add some weight and see what we can do in order to really force this joint apart. But for now, let's get this thing glued together. So we've got this nicely mixed up. And if this looks a little white and a little peanut buttery to you, I do just want you to know that I did add a silica thickener. All it does is it makes it just a little bit thicker and a little bit less runny. So I find it a lot easier to apply to a thing like a mortise and tenon where I want the epoxy to stay put. That looks good to me, let's get one of these glued up. So the first one I'm gonna glue up is the regular mortise and tenon just so that I can really butter this thing up. I'm trying to give this every advantage to win, I'm not gonna lie. I've chosen the cleanest portion of grain for the mortise and I've chosen the straightest portion of grain for the tenon in hopes that that straight grain really just gives the minimalist amount of extra strength to that tenon, but it could be something. So I'm gonna give this every advantage to win over the dominoes. Let's butter this up and get it glued. Oh yeah. Now, I will admit this is an excessive amount of epoxy coming out of this joint, but I wanna make sure that this is absolutely soaked in epoxy to give it every advantage to win.
All right, I've got them both glued up. I've got a little bit of excess. Now this is the thing I usually do. I mix up just a little bit more than I need for two reasons. Number one, so that I don't have to mix up more in the middle of a glue up, because that's a disaster. But two, so that I can always make sure that it cured properly. Because if this is gooey in a day, something went wrong. Something was wrong with the ratio or the way that I mixed it up. And so I know that there's gonna be trouble with that joint. If this is solid, no problems whatsoever. So I've got them glued up, I've got my extra. We're gonna give this the full five days to cure. And then I'm gonna see if I can break these bad boys. Several days later. And just like that, it's been five days. The internet's a magical place, isn't it? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark every six inches away from the actual joint. And then I'm gonna attach this to the wall and I'm gonna put my big old booty up on these things and see if I can't break them or dislodge them. So I've got my boards marked up and so you can see that our distance measurements are the same across these two pieces. I've got my mortise and tenon on top and my domino on the bottom. Now you may notice my mortise and tenon piece is a little bit shorter than my domino piece. And that's of course because they were cut to the same length. And then when I cut the actual tenon, this piece shifted in by the length of the tenon and so the domino piece is a little bit longer. I did want to leave that domino piece just a little bit longer just in case I can't actually break it and I can break the mortise and tenon. I wanted to give myself just a little bit of extra leverage when I go to put weight on this joint to see what happens. So that's the situation. Now let's actually try to break them. So here's how we're gonna test this theory. I'm going to attach these joints to this beam. Now, you've never seen this view of my workshop, I realize. I work in an old Philadelphia textile factory. We're talking mid 1800s, early 1800s. Consequently, we have these giant oak beams in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the joints to these beams and then I'm gonna stand on them progressively farther and farther away in an attempt to dislodge them and break them. So, let's see what happens. So we've got this clamp to the wall. I've got three clamps on here. I've got this support block underneath that I'm just gonna leave in place and see if we can't break it. I'm not entirely sure that I can, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. If I'm venturing a guess, I don't know that this is going to break over 36 inches because this is a very strong joint and I only weigh about 170 pounds. All right, first test right next to the joint. 170 pounds. Okay. I'm gonna break an ankle. I'm too old for this nonsense. So static weight, dynamic weight at six inches. Static and dynamic, excellent. Six inches, 12 inches. That's at 12 inches dynamic weight, static weight it's holding. Moving out to 18 inches. I'm really nervous I'm gonna injure myself right now. Okay, 18 inches. So just to give you an idea, I'm not cheating. Okay, right here. I'm just, there's a conduit back here I'm trying to hold on to for when this breaks so that I don't shatter my ankle because I'm 35 guys. All right, 24 inches. Whew. This is gonna give. This is gonna give at some point soon. I don't feel great about 32 inches, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna roll my bloody ankle. Whew. All right, 32 inches, 170 pounds. Static weight, right? I'm getting more confident with this. I can hear the shoulder separating. I think that's what those pop sounds are, but the joint itself is not giving way. This is an idiotic idea. It's okay guys, I used to be a gymnast <laughs> 20 years ago. 
I'm not sure I can break that joint. Okay. That's solid as a rock. Separation of the shoulder, sure. But that ain't going anywhere. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to replace this with the domino joints, and then I'm gonna test that the same way. And if I can't break that, then we're gonna have to start getting clever with added weight and dynamic pressure in order to try to break these joints apart. But right now, at 34 inches away from that joint, the shoulder was separating slightly, but the joint held together quite nicely. see what happens. Okay, so I've got my domino joint set up in here and I'm not gonna lie, after hearing the way that the shoulder popped on the mortise and tenon joint, I'm a little bit nervous about this holding up. I was very confident that it was going to hold up better than that joint. Let's just test the bloody thing and pray I don't roll an ankle. We're gonna start like we did last time, right up against the joint, very confident. No sounds, no creaking. I'm gonna go to six inches. Static, dynamic, nothing. 12 inches. Static weight. Slight creak. That might be that shoulder again. 18 inches. Good. Guys, that sounds like it's gonna fail. I thought the other one sounded like it was gonna fail too though, so I could be wrong. 24 inches. The sound of that joint. Let's go out to 32, where we were before. That was not the shoulder. All right, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a good go. See if I can't break this at 32 with some dynamic movement. Yeah. Welp. What did happen here exactly? You can see that the fibers of the wood broke apart. The glue where the actual joint was held together. So this is an interesting thing that happened. Let's talk about why that may have happened. So what you'll notice is that the fibers of the wood gave way rather than where the joint actually exists. The dominoes are in place and they're surrounded by fibers of the tree. Now I talked about this in my previous video discussing the theory of this joint, so I'm not gonna go over it again, but suffice it to say that I don't think the glue failed. What failed is the fibers of the tree right here. Because these fibers broke, you can see them kind of following the grain as they arch up this way, and so, that's the thing that gave way. The epoxy itself, the dominoes themselves, are still very much in place. So it is possible, I'm not saying I wasn't wrong, but it is possible that the actual orientation of the grain in the piece of wood with the domino joint is what made it fail versus the mortise and tenon joint where I had that nice straight grain both in the mortise piece and in the tenon piece with the intention of giving it the advantage. So you can see here this grain in the mortise and tenon is nice and straight, as is the grain pattern going into the tenon. So this, from a grain perspective, is rock solid. Whereas this piece, you can see we have all of these cathedral grains. This is flat sawn. So these faults, they might be a little trickier. I'm not a treeologist. I don't know exactly where the strength and the weaknesses of grain lies. It could very well just have been a uh, micro fissure in the grain pattern in this particular piece of wood, not necessarily due to the flat saw nature of that piece. So I'm forced to come to this conclusion due to the nature of this test that the mortise and tenon is in fact stronger than the domino. I was wrong. 
It could be for a number of reasons, right? It could be the leverage that the tenon is actually able to withstand because of the strength of the integral nature of that tenon. It could be because I put six dominoes in here that while it added glue strength, it actually took away from the solid nature, the, the integral strength of the mortise itself. That is certainly a possibility. So there's any number of variables that this isn't scientific enough to diagnose. However, what we wanted to see was which joint would break first over a period of distance away from the joint and the clear winner, the mortise and tenon. So friends, that's today's video. I'm shocked by the results, but I'm going to move on. I hope it was entertaining. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was educational. I hope it inspires you to get into your shop, do some things, make some things, and take some risks. And friends, Next time, next time, I'm hanging the door. Let's get that bloody project out of the way so I can move on to other interesting things. Until the next one, friends, be good making decisions as always. Cheers.